you for taking the time to participate in our PSP webinar. Join us as a member, volunteer, polling agent, or counting agent by visiting our website, psp.org.sg. Singaporeans are living in fear. Fear no more. We cannot afford to live in a country where fear is prevalent. I'm Dr. Ang Yong Guan. I'm a psychiatrist. I've been practicing for the last 30 over years and I run a clinic at Paragon. I was with the Singapore Armed Forces for 23 years, rising to the rank of colonel as a military psychiatrist. I grew up in a very poor family. I benefited from the meritocratic system of the People's Action Party and I must thank them, I'm grateful. For 15 years, I was doing grassroots work, paying back to the nation. The trend at the moment is very unhealthy. There's complacency at the top. Things are being controlled very tightly. Singaporeans on the ground are feeling very disillusioned and also helpless because they can't do much to contribute to nation building. When you are unable to speak up freely and your speech is curtailed, then you find that your role as a citizen is curtailed. That can affect the soul of the nation. You can be against the People's Action Party, but you can be pro-Singapore. We can together create a compassionate, fair country where people are proud to be citizens with high self-esteem and a deep sense of belonging and patriotism. A nation needs to have a soul. Please give me your support. Thank you. Without further ado, I shall hand over to our moderator for this evening's session. Moderator, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Hi, my name is Hubert Tang, and I've been a Marymount resident for the past 23 years. And it was a chance meeting at the Void Deck that led to my being invited here this evening to engage in a dialogue PSP candidate for Marymount SMC, Dr. Ang Yongguan. Tonight, the focus will be on Dr. Ang, as we put him in the psychiatrist chair, so to speak, to find out more about the man and his vision of a Marymount dream and how he intends to serve you and I, residents of Marymount, if elected as our member of parliament. Now, we'll be keeping the questions focused on Marymount SMC this evening. So please type in your questions into the Q&A box in Zoom and YouTube Live. Good evening, Dr. Ang. Good evening, Hubert. Okay, shall we begin with a quick one minute sharing of your professional and grassroots experience? Yes, certainly. I am a clinical psychiatrist. I'm a psychiatrist of more than 30 over years of experience. First of all, to be a psychiatrist, you need to be a doctor. So I got my MBBS from the University of Singapore in 1979. Then I went to Institute of Mental Health to work for two years. And then after that, I went to University of Edinburgh in Scotland to pursue two years of psychiatry. So I obtained my postgraduate degree in 1986. That means I have been a psychiatrist since 1986. I returned to serve in the Singapore Armed Forces for more than 23 years, 17 of which was as a military psychiatrist, 17 years, rising to the rank of colonel. And then after that, I retired in 2003 to set up my own practice at Paragon. 
I'm now practicing there and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Attending to patients' needs, seeing patients, assessing them, diagnosing them and treating them. That's my clinical work. I have devoted 15 years to do grassroots work. I was chairman of Pongo CCMC and I was secretary of the Citizens Consultative Committee. So as far as grassroots work is concerned, I have gone through, I've done it. I know what makes a grassroots leader tick and how a grassroots leader serves the community. Then besides grassroots work, I also do community work, more than 30 years of community work. I remember in 1984, I was serving as secretary to the United Nations Association of Singapore, and that's UNAS, U-N-A-S. And that was 1984. I was a young medical officer then. And, up, and ever since then, I've been doing community work. The most uh, memorable one is I set up an action group for mental illness, ACME, A-G-M-I, in 2004. And I was a chairman for more than a decade. What is ACME? ACME is to advocate for the mentally ill in Singapore. Any policy that is against the mentally ill, ACME, A-G-M-I, was picked up for the mentally ill. So I've been championing for the mentally ill ever since 2004 in ACME, A-G-M-I. I caught the attention of the Straits Times and I was featured one whole page in 2009 February and I was known as a champion of the mentally ill as far as Straits Times was concerned in 2009. And that was uh, something that I, I was very proud of. And besides that, I, I appeared a lot on uh, Channel 8, Chao An Ni Hao, Good Morning Singapore, and also Xiao Mao Ping Ta Wen Ti, showing, uh, telling Singaporeans what mental illness is all about and what is mental health, educating them how to cope with stress, how to deal with mental problems. So I share, and that I see as a community work, I share a lot uh, over radio, over television with Singaporeans about mental health and mental illness. And that I see as community work. So more than 30 years of community work. And I was president of the Singapore Psychiatric Association. I was chairman of the chapter of Psychiatry Academy of Medicine. I was uh, ah, appointed as a member of the Council of Problem Gambling, Council, National Council on Problem Gambling, helping gamblers uh, who, who are addicted to gambling. And then I was appointed as a medical expert witness or expert medical expert in the subordinate courts for a period of three years. So when the subordinate courts need medical expert opinion, they turn to me. So Hubert, this is how I would sum up myself. I'm a psychiatrist. I do a lot of clinical work. I was a grassroots leader. I am still doing community work and I've been doing that for more than 30 years. And that, in a nutshell, is my profile. I would like to know as a resident, what drives you to do all this community work for over 30 years? What do you gain from it? I think it's linked to my passion in helping people. The center of it all is people, the person in front of you. So whether it is as a psychiatrist, as a grassroots leader, as a community leader, I am doing work related to people. I want to link up with people. I want to help people. People is at the center of my life in all the work that I do. That's why, that's why I am a people-centered person. I show empathy. I want to know what makes the person tick. I want to put myself in the shoes of that person, whether it's a clinic in clinical work, grassroots work or community work. So the common underlying threat is people. The con common underlying recurring theme is people. People, in other words, is my passion. And my motto in life is do, learn, grow. Do, learn, grow. I want to do well in my life, do smartly, do well. I want to learn better ways of doing well. And I want to grow, grow as a person.
mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. The four aspects of life. So in a nutshell, I'm at and I'm, I'm a lifelong learner. I always enjoy new things. I learn new things and I grow. And I'm not embarrassed when I say I'm not sure what, I'm not sure about that topic. Let me find out more about that topic. And that, that is the underlying theme throughout my life. Doing, learning, and growing. Hubert, well, back I think to you. I think that's a very good thing and you can share with us. It took me a long time to learn that, you know, <laughs> to, to learn how to grow as a person and uh, I think what you can do is perhaps help us residents to learn the way you do and not be shy to say that oh I don't know yes humility you must be humble before you can learn if you think you know everything you cannot learn so the start point of learning and growing is humility I don't know let's let's do something about it thank you I think that shows me your heart doctor and speaking of doctors, it was another doctor, Dr. Martin Luther King, who first said, I have a dream. So please share with us your Marymount dream, Dr. An. Okay, before I go into the Marymount dream, let's be clear. Marymount is a new SMC. What is the origin of the word Marymount? Marymount. I went to take a look. Marymount actually is near MacRitchie Reservoir. So what has MacRitchie Reservoir got to do with Marymount? Then I realized MacRitchie in Chinese is Ma Li Chi, Ma Li Chi, Ma Li Chi, sorry, Ma Li Chi. Chi is in Chinese riding a horse. Chi Ma, Chi Ma is riding a horse. So Ma Li Chi, the Chinese translation of MacRitchie eventually become Chi Ma is riding a horse. And what is mount? You mount a horse. You mount a horse. So eventually it mop into Mary Mount. Instead of saying Mary Chi. Mary Chi means not so nice. So they call it Mary Mount. So mount is equivalent to Chi Ma. You mount a horse. Lo and behold, and it's in Wikipedia, you know. <laughs> I discovered that Mary Mount comes from Macrichi, the Chinese translation. Ma Li Chi, Chi Ma. But in English, we say Mary Chi, not so nice. So it's Mary, Mary Mount. So it became Mary Mount. Okay, that's my first point I want to raise. The second point is that I don't know how they cover up Mary Mount. It is a very awkward <laughs> SMC. It's an inverted L shape. Inverted L shape. And Right in the middle of this inverted L shape is Marymount Road. Marymount Road. Okay, let me explain. This Marymount Road divided my SMC or our SMC into West Marymount and East Marymount. So West Marymount, right at the bottom of West Marymount is Marymount MRT Station. Then slightly above is Shunfu Industrial, sorry, Shunfu Housing Estate. And then you have the Sunfu market in this area. And, and then beyond that, you, you have the landed properties, the only landed properties in Marymount SMC, about 400 houses there. And then you have five three room HDB flats, block 22 to 26, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, five blocks. And of the five blocks, block 26 is so unique. This is the only rental block in the entire Marymount SMC. And then you, you move slightly up, you Singming Industrial Estate. And then beyond that, you have Inova Junior College and Marymount Community Club. Just weeks ago, it was called Bishan North community club. And they time it so nicely co to coincide with the general election. Suddenly, the word Vishan North was taken out and become Marymount Community Center, Community Club. So that is the west of Marymount Road, uh, west Marymount. Mm -hmm. Then, if you cross 
there is an overhead bridge from Block 26 to the eastern side of Marymount, the east of Marymount Road. And if you take the overhead bridge from Block 26, you go over, you cross Marymount Road, then you enter East Marymount. And East Marymount con consists mainly of high-rise building, right? From, and there you have five polling districts, what I call M8 to M12. And that whole area is divided by into North and South, or up, Upper and Lower Marymount, North and South, by Bishan Street 22, Bishan Street 22. So the whole area there consists mainly of four room, five room executive masonics and one condo, the Clover by the Park. So the whole area there is all high rise building. And the, the capital of that place, I call it Kaukang Street 22, the Orchard Road of the area. Because Bishan if you want to go to any, huh? Bishan Street 22. Ah, Bishan Street 22. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I say? Doesn't matter. It's Bishan Street 22. Ah, Bishan Street 22 is Orchard Road of the area. You want to go to any part of the area, you have to pass by Bishan Street 22. And the, the center of that whole area is Bishan North Shopping Mall shopping mall. That is like the, the capital of the area. People need to go to that area to buy things, yes. to do their shopping. Right? So this is a very unique area. I would say mainly middle income and upper middle income living in that area. And that, that in a nutshell is Marymount SMC. So what's my dream for Marymount SMC? Very simple. It's not just about infrastructure, facilities, amenities. It is also about quality of life. My dream is that Marymount residents enjoy high quality of life, where they feel proud to live in Marymount, where they are happy, where they can deal with, with stress, where they can enjoy life. Even on top of working hard, they can still play hard, relax, Bringing back, I would say, the Gotong Royong spirit. The Gotong Royong spirit is, as you and I know, the kampong spirit of the 60s and 70s. The Kalal Raw, no way you, in the 70s, people queue up to go into National Stadium to watch our football team trounce other states from Malaysia. That is the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of patriotism the kind of sense of belonging to the nation that I want to bring to Marymount. So Marymount resident will say, ah, I am proud to be in Marymount. I am proud. I'm uniquely Marymount. Marymount makes me feel happy. When I come back to Marymount, Marymount is my second home. My first home is the apartment I live in. The second home is Marymount. So when I enter street, Bishan Street 22, I feel happy because this is where I belong. And this is what I want to see happen in Marymount. Not just facilities, but quality of life. Not just the hardware, but the hardware, hardware. That's what I want to see happening in Marymount. We, together, I'm confident we can do it. And I need feedback from you. I need you to tell me. I've collected a lot of feedback during my walkabout. It's work in progress. You can continue to feedback to me. I am a 24 hours, 24 7 MP if I am elected. Anytime you can email me, leave me a message, I will be attending to it. If I can't, my supporters, my helpers, my volunteers will look into it. So I will pause here. This is just my broad sweep about what I want Marymount to be a place where on top of facilities, we really take care of the people. We really talk about quality of life, where there's compassion, there's grace, there is happiness, there's uh, togetherness, the, 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 the lab, neighborliness that I want to see happen in Marymount. 
Otherwise, what will we become? We go home, we close the door, we could become very self-centered. And we are therefore not unlike other people in Singapore, you know, so-called kiasu and self-centered. We want to be different. And that's my dream. Different, to feel different when you live in Marymount. Hubert, back to you. You've almost transported me to a new land I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my aim. That's the meaning of the word dream. Dream means we all need to dream. You can dream big, but let's also be practical. Certain things cannot be achieved. We continue to dream. <laughs> Certain things that can be achieved, let's make it happen. Yes, I think that's the key point, to make it happen. So to make it happen. I'd like to ask you now as well. It seems like our question has been answered, but let me just ask you directly. How much and for how long have you walked the ground in Marymount? And what are the common issues that you have heard from residents? Okay. Before it was called Marymount SMC, the only road I know has the word Marymount in Marymount Road, right? But I, I used to frequent Bishan North Shopping Mall. I know there's an Ang Mo supermarket there, and I used to go there. Why? Because my uncle lived at Ang, Ang Mo Kyo Avenue 10. And there's also an Ang Mo supermarket at Ang Mo Kyo Avenue 10. And I go there, and I heard that, oh, there's also an Ang Mo at Bishan North Shopping Mall. So I also go there. And on top of that, there is a 24-hour NTUC there at Block 279. So I do, I did, frequent the place before it even became Marymount SMC. So that, that is fact number one. I knew of the place, but I never knew it was going to be called Marymount SMC. All I knew was Bishan Street 22 and the NTUC 24 hour and Anmo supermarket. Where they sell really discounted goods. So that, that's my first point. My second point is that when I got wind that I'm going to Marymount SMC in March, I started planning. I started walking the ground. The first thing I did four months ago was to walk from Marymount MRT station through Shunfu Estate, through the five blocks HDB flats I talk about, into a bit of seeming industrial area, heading towards Inoa Junior College, turn right past then it was Bishan North CC, cross the road, enter Bishan Street 22, walk a bit past the Bishan North shopping mall, turn into Bishan Street 24, which led me all the way to Whitley Secondary School and Catholic High. Then walk back, turn right into Bishan Street 22 again, then all the way to Bishan Road which is the other major road flanking the other side of Marymount SMC. Down Bishan Road, all the way to Bishan MRT Station, where Junction 8 is. The entire journey, walking from Marymount MRT Station to Bishan MRT Station, took me four and a half hours. Goodness. And I, <laughs> I, I had a... a, a a, a, a glimpse, a grasp of the entire span of my SMC four and four months ago. And I really enjoy. I really enjoy. And, and then when I started planning, I knew where is Shun Fu, where is the landed property, and where is M8, M9, M10, M11, and M12. M stands for the bowling district. Yeah. I see, I see. Well, it sounds like you really walk the ground and you know Marymount SMC better than I do and I've been living here for like 23 years. I don't blame you, Hubert, because you, you, you were located northeast of Marymount SMC and you never knew that Shun Fu is going to be Marymount. <laughs> you never knew that Sing Ming, the five blocks of HDV flats, is going to be Marymount, right? Yes, and not many of us know that Marymount actually originated from McRitchie. Back Richie, Ma Li Chi. Mm -hmm. So Marymount is rich in amenities. For example, 
Bishan Active, Bishan Parks 1 and 2, covered walkways, okay? So does all this hardware for the residents actually equate to the quality of life and happiness? Are we really happy? Very good point. And I always say, I mean, in fact, throughout my campaign period, I always say growing the economy is one half of the equation. You can have, you can be very wealthy, but you may not be happy. Yesterday, when, when I did my three minute uh, media broadcast, that was my emphasis. You can not, you can be happy without being wealthy, right? So having wealth doesn't mean you're healthy, doesn't mean you're happy. So economic achievement alone doesn't make a happy citizen. A happy citizen is more than just having money, having economic, access to economic facilities or infrastructure is more than that. So let us emphasize on the other half of the equation which is quality of life. We need to have high quality of life so that we work hard, bringing the income. We also play hard, know how to relax, know how to cope with stress and know how to feel good about ourselves. That is the second half. That is the other part of the equation that I will be paying attention to. And I want to make uh, very much a model SMC for the whole country to see that Marymount citizen can play hard, Marymount resident can play hard, relax hard, relax well, and achieve high standard and quality of living at the same time. So, so I, I'm very happy. It, Marymount SMC allows me to put into what I believe in, quality of life. That Hubert, is that Fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Now for all the good that's been done so far with all the amenities and the quality, so-called quality of life with all the improvements with the covered walkways and everything else and how we're supposed to be a third world nation. Are we still stressed as Singaporeans? And how do you propose? This I'm going to tap on your professional experience as a psychiatrist, yeah? How do you propose to help Marymount residents go from stressed to happy? Very good. Uh, uh, Hubert, before I, I forgot, because your, your earlier question, you asked me what kind of uh, problems or issues uh, mm -hmm. the residents spoke about during my walkabout. So uh, let, let me briefly say, I won't go into details. Uh, for example, West Marymount it is about having a feeder bus service, about block 23 and 24 being very untidy, dirty, smell of urine, at the void deck, not enough space. Whenever there's a funeral wake, the shops have to close because they built a tentage in front of the shops. And then you have limited parking space, only a two-story parking space. So if there's a funeral wake going on, impossible for residents to park. And then the, the shops have to close. Imagine a funeral wake of five days. The shops cannot function for five days, cannot open for five days. And then uh, the very rundown place. And block 26, it's in itself a very unique block with its own unique problem because it's a rental block. A rent, we went there a few times. You know, it's, it's a common cor corridor, which is very dark, smelly, and dirty. So something got to be done to spruce it up, right? So that's West, West Marymount. And then the lender property is already 60 year old. Somehow, you have to pay attention to make the residents feel that they are living in a, a place that's well-maintained, well-kept, uh, and not neglected. There's a little park there in the landed uh, property area, but we really got to um, make the park brighter, cleaner, and better to serve the residents. That's West Marymount. Then we come to East Marymount. East Marymount, the, the issue seems to be the, to do it, maintenance, maintenance, you know, it's 30 years old. So how to maintain and make it, continue to make it clean and, uh, and well-maintained. Huh? So for example, uh, residents were complaining about uh, 
they, they are very localized issues. For example, generator noise, maybe affecting only a few units. But they, the, the main issue, they kept complaining, but nothing much was done. Then alarm ringing from the adjacent school uh, or junior college. And again, they wrote in, but nothing seemed to be done. In the middle of the night, can you imagine you're awakened by alarm from the nearby junior college and, and, and nothing could be done. And then they raised the issue. So I think the key thing is responsiveness. They don't, they don't seem to get prompt response eh? every time they make a complaint. I think we have to put a stop to it. Quality service must prevail. If you don't have quality service, residents always feel that nothing is being done. The perception is that it's inefficient. It, uh, it, something must be done promptly, then efficiency can come in. And then other issues are, today we, someone complained of there is, there's a need for a parking, a uh, bicycle lane, special bicycle lane, perhaps along Street 22, when people cycle. And, and then covered Lingwei from your area, your area all the way to Bishan MRT station. And this, these are some are enough facilities for the senior citizens. And then I noticed uh, in your area, you know, Hubert, yes. at, at the void deck, uh, I saw two books, two or three bookshelves of books, you know, yes. not well maintained, very dirty books, you know, in the bookshelf and, and no, no chairs or tables for people to sit. So to me, it is like you take the book, you bring up, you read, then you put back the book in the bookshelf, but it's not well maintained. So what's going on? I, I, I want to know, you know who is responsible for all these book services. Huh? What, what's going on? You know? why, why is it so poorly maintained? Well, I saw not... in, in one block, huh? yes. the, the bookshelves were in one isolated corner. And then I said, why don't we locate the bookshelf near where we have chairs and tables? Why is it located in an area with no chairs, no table? Uh, these are, I would call, local issues which we can attend to when I'm the member of parliament. Thank you very much, doctor. Yeah. So coming back to your question about stress. Yes. How do we go for ask about stress? Yes. Isn't that, Hubert? Your latest question is about stress, right? That's correct. How do you propose to help Marymount residents to go from stressed to happy? Okay. Okay. Broadly speaking, we have good stress and bad stress. Bad stress is when you cannot cope with it anymore and it has affected your body, whether physically or mentally. And that I would call bad stress, where your not only affects your quality of life, it also affects your ability to function. You can't eat. concentrate. You can't concentrate. You can't eat well. You can't sleep well. Uh, your work is affected. Your performance drops. Then I think you need help. And I would, I would classify that as bad stress. Either in terms of quantity that you cannot deal with or quality, the nature of the stress that you cannot handle. Then there's good stress. Good stress is short-lived. It's a stimulus for you to the adrenaline flow for you to do better, to achieve greater heights. So good stress motivates you, stimulates you, make you want to do better. And, and therefore, opposite to bad stress, it actually is a catalyst for better performance. So I would stress a lot on promotion of, yes, we stress is a fact of life. Marymount resident will be told, uh, stress is a fact of life. But please don't make it a way of life. Everybody has stress to some extent, minor or major stress. So don't ever say I'm stressed, nothing new. <laughs> it's nothing new when you say you're stressed, everybody is stressed. The, the, the issue is I'm stressed, but stress is not part of my life. I can handle stress. Stress is a challenge. I can overcome it. Then that is what I would call good stress. Bad stress is when you succumb to it. So how can we overcome it? Well, it's one big lecture. When I'm elected, I will have a series of perhaps dialogue with Hubert <laughs> on how to deal with stress or what are the methods available and how do we go about doing it? So I don't want to bore you with the details just to let you know bad stress versus good stress. 
an idea that stress is a fact of life, but don't make it a way of life. Back to you, Hubert. Thank you. I was just wondering, you know, uh, the idea, I was just toying with the idea, since you're a psychiatrist, uh, would you propose something like, you know, psychiatric counselling uh, place uh, or financial counselling, stress counselling, something to help the mental and emotional health of Marymount residents? Very good question. So, I think we need to have one-stop centre where it, when a Marymount resident feels that something is affecting him or her, sometimes it's ill-defined, sometimes you're not clear what's affecting you. All he or she has to do is pick up the phone or go to a location, uh, meet somebody. But nowadays, uh, a physical meeting may not be necessary. <laughs> All you have to do is to have a WhatsApp video conference or a, ch a chat or even a Zoom uh, session with, with somebody. So we are going to have this, this kind of uh, service, a one-stop service where you can call out your problems, be it financial, psychological, or physical problems. And then this one-stop center will be able to direct you to the relevant centers or facilities for help. So that's something that I, I, I plan to do, and that's part of a Marymount dream, where anyone with any problem, be it any kind of problem, can pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Hmm. So that's wonderful. No? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hmm. Let's talk about bread and butter issues now, shall we? Yes. How do you propose to set up the town council? Okay. Well, we are contesting in... Yochukang, Kela is there. We are contesting Kerbun Baru. Kumaran is there. And if all three of us win, we will set up a joint town council to manage, for economy of scale, to manage issues pertaining to the three SMCs. If only one is victorious, then we will set up we continue to set up a town council and we will get expert advice from HQ. PSP HQ has set up a town council advisory committee. Town council advisory committee. Amongst the 24 candidates and also amongst the members of PSP, we have a lot of talent. We have CEOs, we have CFOs, Chief Financial Officer. We have logistic officers, they are all, all ever ready to give advice to help set up town council. In fact, Man Wai, my assistant secretary general, told me there's no big deal to set up a town council. He's, he has all the knowledge. Anybody who has run a company well will have no problem running a town council well. That's one point. Don't forget, uh, Kang town council was alone before Focus Party won our unit GRC. Potong Pase Town Council was alone and they both could manage their own town council. So there are already examples. The best thing to know is we can do it. And uh, well, the funding will come from collections from residents, right? And with adequate funding, there will be adequate facilities. And my emphasis will be on quality service. When you have problem, the town council will be serving you within X number of hours of notice. So you feel that, you know, we are prompt in our service. Quality service will be my motto. Residents in Marymount will get quality service. At the end of it, you will judge me how effective I am as a member of parliament. At the end of one year, you will say, wow, Dr. Ang has made Marymount so different from other SMCs or other constituencies. And people will say, wow, you're from Marymount. Wow, your MP is on the ball. Wow, you're from Marymount. Your MP really takes care of you. Wow, you're from Marymount. Your MP has full of ideas. Wow, you're from Marymount. Wow, your MP listens to you. He's not a dictator. <laughs> he doesn't insist that he's right all the time. Uh, that's what I want. I want to empower Marymount residents, make them feel good, 
Thank you. Okay, back to you, Hubert. As you grow older as a society, how do you propose to help the senior citizens of Marymount? Well, to me, as I said, my motto is do, learn, grow, right? Lifelong learning. I'm a lifelong learner. So we must have that climate of lifelong learning for senior citizens, whether it's dancing, calligraphy, singing, playing a musical instrument, learning Zoom, uh, learning to use the computer. I think we must have all these available and accessible to the senior citizens in Marymount. So then, then you see, we need to have social interaction. Remember, quality of life is not staying at home all the time by yourself. Quality of life is also interacting with people. No man is an island by himself. So quality of life in, involves social interaction. So how to interact? We can have senior citizens corner. We can have, um, you know, machine, coke machine, serving dreams. Uh, we can have facilities where we... we uh, what I want is that in Marymount, people are so friendly. They know each other and they chit-chat. Uh, they, they, they will have small talks. They make conversation and art. You know, we don't want to... A nation. We don't, don't want a place where you only talk when you want to get something from that person. When you have ulterior motive, then then the conversation becomes transactional. You transactional. Uh, okay, we I'm don't gonna, want that. We want, huh? I want to test you a little bit further, okay? Because uh, the thing that you mentioned for senior citizens, um, the activities, classes, dancing, don't all that already exist in the current SMC? Ah, uh, very good. So they exist, but I want to know what is the participation rate? People's Association, the CC should tell us what is the participation rate? Are we having the same people enrolling in the same, in, in the different classes all the time? Then I would reach out to those who are not active in these classes. If, if the participation rate is low, 20%, 30%, then I'm curious, how can we make it 50% or more? How do we encourage people to enroll in courses? Your motivators, your senior citizen motivators. Huh? We, we need to have motivators, motivate them to come out of their shell and take part in activities. So that's correct. We have the, these courses, but what is the participation rate? And do we really know what our senior citizen want? Is there a need for a survey? Find out Marymount citizens, senior citizens, what do they really want? Maybe they don't want calligraphy. Maybe they prefer dancing. They prefer maybe sightseeing. You know, then we really got to send them to places to see places of interest. So I really don't know. We really need to explore, find out what do they really want. Mm. And for all those existing courses, what is the participation rate? If it's low, can we make it higher? So in other Does words, that make sense, Hubert? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm getting a clearer picture now. So what you're saying is, you know, um, find out from the senior citizens what they want first, rather than saying, nah, this is the gift pack that we have for you inside. It has Maggie, me, Milo, and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, Correct, also, yeah. uh, even though they have the activities already, you want to engage the ones who are not actively participating, the ones who say, no, no, I'd rather stay at home. Is that right? Yes, absolutely right. It's about enhancement, you know. Uh, otherwise, you become complacent. Oh, I have activities for them. They're not interested in taking part. What can I do? And then I think that's complacency. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything to motivate them? No, la, it's up to them. La. If they don't come, what can I do? Uh, that's complacency. Okay. And, and that's not quality of life. That's just, I, I'm, that's called a state of resignation. <laughs> You're resigned to the fact that there's nothing much can be done. Okay. And that's the saddest thing, you know, in any society to just feel there's nothing much I can do. Now, how about the young? Let's go to the young right now. How are you going to help the children of Marymount? Okay. I want them to have their childhood. Every child in Marymount must have their childhood. And childhood is not just computer games or handphone games. Childhood is go down to the playground, <laughs> rough it out there, enjoy. Uh, 
whatever, play, play, football, basketball, uh, even wrestling, <laughs> friendly wrestling on the field, you know, that kind of thing. It's a big chunk missing in, in our modern childhood. And I want to bring it back to Mary Mom. Stop addicted to your screen time. It's time to get off the screen and go down to the ground and play. And, and surveys, research has shown that play is real play, uh, not the playing computer games kind of playing. Uh. Real play is very good for emotional growth. It teaches you about empathy. You empathize with the other party when you play face, hey, I don't know, face to face with the other person. And you take turn, you know, you role play, you take turn, you massage, massage, you take turn. And then you enhance self-worth. You know, you talk about empathizing with the other person. And you, you grow, your, your, your social skills will grow. And that's very important. Social skills are so important in life. High EQ is so important. And it can only come when very mild children don't just stick to their handphone games and their iPad games or their computer games. They must go out and play. So we must, number one, ensure there are enough playing facilities for them to rough it out in the field. There's an act, Bishan Active Park. So yes. we must encourage them to go to the park. And then there's another neighborhood park around uh, Bishan North Shopping Mall there. We must beautify it, enhance it, make it children friendly. And then we advise, encourage children to play in those playgrounds. So number one. Number two, how to make study, education enjoyable, not a chore. See education as a challenge. And, and really parents must not stifle the artistic pursuits of their children. If you're 11 years old, and you're interested in art, music, sports, singing, dancing, let, let your child develop in those areas. Don't just say, no, next year is your PSLE. You better concentrate on science, maths, English, Chinese. You can stop dancing for a while. Why, why do we need to do that? Please don't do that. Hobbies enhance their emotional health, their emotional growth. So let them flourish in artistic pursuit. At the same time, if they can handle their studies, that would be ideal. But even if they can't, you don't have to spend all the time studying those four academic subjects. Sometimes you've got to let go and let them pursue their hobbies, their interests. Then they would find more, a more balanced life. Not just study, study, study. Worse, you know, morning school, afternoon tuition. And the whole day is just studying maths, science, Chinese, English. What about artistic pursuit? Let them play hands-on if they are the type who like to experiment uh, with Rubik Cube. Let them play the Rubik Cube. <laughs> mess around. <laughs> no, play. If you want to play with clay, let them mess around with clay. Uh, that, that's my idea of a what I would call a proper childhood. Thank you very much, Dr. Ang. Um, I think it's time to move on to the questions because we've got a lot of questions to answer. Now, we'll be keeping the questions focused on Marymount SMC this evening. So please type in your questions into the Zoom Q&A box and on YouTube Live. All right, so Dr. Ang, are you ready for the first question? Yes, ready. <laughs> now, this is a pretty long one. So bear with me as I read this out. Now, I'm going to graduate in 2021. A concern for me is getting a job. It is mentioned that the influx of migrant workers is making job, job search in this retrenchment period even more difficult for Singaporeans. However, I feel the rapid rise and dependence of technology is a stronger contributor to lower wage job holders. The staple for most lower to middle class families being overturned and replaced, resulting in skills to become obsolete and making adaptation to a new job market difficult. As such, how would you address the issue of automation replacing manpower in parliament, ensuring there's a balance for coexistence between the two and that Singaporeans do not become replaced? Well, 
that's a very long question. It's a very long question indeed. And it's not yes. just based on Marymount SMC. Correct. It's a national level question. Okay, we just do this and, one. Uh, okay, I, I'll try my best. And uh, in a sense, it's also complicated by the COVID-19. It's part of the COVID post-COVID-19 recovery strategy. Uh, we, we really got to think hard. And uh, the first thing we, we need to do is, do we need to rely so much on foreign workers? There are close to a million of them. So a strategy must, must uh, come out to, we must evolve, we must develop a strategy, how we slowly face out the reliance on foreign workers. And we're talking about construction workers any, earning eight or $900 a month. We cannot immediately face them out. The construction industry will collapse. That's very clear. So we, how do we gradually face them out and tell the construction industry, don't rely so much on these workers. Try to build our own local workforce. So we have to incentivize the whole process. Give our local construction bosses the incentives to hire our local workers. At the same time, we must tell our local workers, we will give you minimum living wage so that you don't feel, what's the point of being a construction worker? I cannot live with $800, $900 a month. So it, 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 we have to look into the living wage part, a minimum wage for them who want to be a construction worker. And, it, and eventually, they, they, they can take pride in being a, either a construction worker, an air con technician, or even a plumber. Well, these are low-grade jobs, but they are, they are important for the construction industry. So we make sure there's pride in doing those jobs and they are properly paid. All right? Then eventually we face out the need for foreign workers so from 1 million, maybe it dropped to 800,000, 600,000, 500,000, eventually to 300,000 or even I think zero is impossible. And then we have a comfortable level. At the same time, we build up our own local workforce. Yes, it's a bit expensive. Yes, your profit margin may be cut because you are now employing workers and you have to pay them more, local workers, and you have to pay them more compared to foreign workers. But please don't just be... As the profit driven, and that's what I mentioned. Don't just look at the economic equation, look at the quality of life, look at the other side of the equation. You're promoting you know, the livelihoods of our own local workforce. That's pertaining to the uh, local workforce. For the PMETs, we really have to, again, quota. We've got to set quota so that we rely less and less on foreign PMETs and then promote our own PMET, especially promoting the SMEs. Because SMEs can employ the local PMETs. So we, have, we must have a, a very uh, flourishing uh, SME climate, small, medium enterprise climate, where innovation is part of that climate. Then you, you will find that people, the, the local, our own local PMET will have jobs because your SMEs are flourishing. SMEs will employ the local PMETs. Then a person who, 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 who is going to graduate will feel that, oh, there'll be jobs for me. So again, that's my second point pertaining to foreign PMET. We should rely again less and less on them. We should have a quota, how many we want to import or per year, you know, so that we, we encourage our local PMET to flourish. So that, that answered the point of uh, workforce. To the point of automation, I think it's a global phenomenon. It's not just pertaining to Singapore. AI is going to be part of our lives, whether you like it or not. Robots will take over our, our jobs in one way or another. You look go to, I, I went to Topayo basement hawker center there is a robot collecting dish trade, <laughs> collecting trays, turn right, turn left. <laughs> we just put a tray into the robotic machine. Well, can't be helped. That robot reduces the jobs of the cleaners. But that's life. That's 
robots will one day replace many jobs. So what do we do? Make sure we are internet savvy, make sure we leverage on technology, make sure we are current with our know-how and make sure we make ourselves useful. Learn. Then the, my motto of do, learn, grow become very useful. Learn current things. Learn to be needed, needed by the various industries. Then you will, you will have your job. People will employ you. Continual learning process. Continuous learning process. I hope I have answered the question, Hubert. Yes, thank you. And in continuation, uh, this same gentleman asked, you mentioned that you would like to hold a sharing session for the elders and mental health facilities around the SMC if you're elected. Will there be an opportunity for training, volunteering, or even internship or career positions in these facilities for people interested in having a career in clinical psychology like me? Wonderful, wonderful. Hey. There, there are 23,444 voters in Marymount. And if you talk about household, there are about 9,000 over households. Each household will have three or four voters. Okay, so 9,000 household. And how do we make sure this so-called counseling one center, one-stop center, center can reach out to these households? And number two, how, how do we staff this one-stop center? And part of that one-stop center, we have a counseling branch. How do we staff this counseling branch? Uh, what kind of, is it counselors, social workers? Uh, is it full-time, part-time or volunteers? And, and training for these people, ongoing training, case discussion and case management. Internship will be part and parcel of this. So, and then affiliation to the relevant department in the university also become part of the issue. When I'm elected, I make sure we'll explore this, we'll brainstorm this, and then we come up with a paper. Once it's approved, we'll work on the paper. We have a one-stop center with a counseling branch or a counseling center. And the questioner point about internship, training, I think will be addressed in this paper. Back to you, Hubert. Okay, we've got an animal question right now from an animal lover, I believe. And in proposing to set up these facilities around Marymount SMC, how would you ensure that renovations do not displace or scare away the stray animals around the area whom the community feeders and residents have grown attached to? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Very good point. So how do we temporarily provide a site where these stray animals can go to? And talking about stray animals, how about adoption, you know? At the same time, we must explore adoption, adopting the cat, adopting the dog, so that you, he, 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 the dog cannot be a stray dog or cat forever. So at, at the same time, we must explore adoption policies. And then, uh, yeah, we really got to make sure temporary area set aside if there's renovation going on for all these stray pets and not stray pets, stray animals. Good question, but uh, really we, we got to, uh, this is where empathy comes in. Uh, they, pet lovers, animal lovers, they, they cannot bear to see that the construction activities take away proper areas for these stray dogs and cats to go to. Okay, I take note of that. Another good question coming up, Doc. Yes, I'm, you will. I'm a resident of Block 25 at Sin Ming Road. I would like to raise these following questions, and there are two of them. So the first question, in your pamphlet, you stated you would like to make Singapore more inclusive. How will your party help LB, LGBTQ plus individuals be accepted in society? Okay, right. Um, it's about how, how judgmental we are. I, I want to adopt an attitude of non-judgment. These are people with 
their lifestyle. And let's don't judge them, right? They have a right to live a quality of life that I talk about. So let's be non-judgmental. Let's allow them, embrace them to, to function within Marymount SMC. So that will be my first approach. And uh, I think it's an educational process. People must learn uh, that such group, uh, group of people exist. And then uh, it's how to tolerate, coexist, embrace them. So it's a continuous educational process. There is no need to uh, fear them, ostracize them, or cut them off you know, from society. That would be my approach. I think it's an, again, it's a work in progress, ongoing process of engagement, right? Yeah. Well, part two of the question from the same person. What is your party plan to do to protect the environment while trying to balance that with economic growth? Yeah, we, if you look at our manifesto, the seven page manifesto online, there's one chunk on uh, protecting the, the environment and also about climate change. I think you, you cannot, cannot develop the economy at the expense of destroying the environment. You cannot develop the economy at the expense of not paying attention to climate change. So as a party, we are conscious of it and we will make effort to make sure that economic growth does not destroy the environment or ignore the, or emphasizing economic growth but ignoring climate change related issues. Okay, back to you, Hubert. Yes, and our next question. Currently, Bishan has so far been very well managed with constant facility upgrades. So this person would mean Mary Mountla. If you're going to take over, what will be your future plans for us facilities-wise? Thank you. Okay. Okay, granted, it's well managed. I have no issue with that. But... It's a maintenance also. I mean, you can have many facilities, you can build many facilities, but please pay attention to maintenance of facilities. And then uh, do a survey, some of these facilities, how widely utilized are, they, are, are these facilities? And uh, we, we don't want a situation of the utilization rate is not matched with the facilities. And then you have some so-called white elephant. You can have a white elephant and not, not properly used, not utilized. That's what we don't want. So when, when I take over, I, I would want to know what are the facilities Marymount citizens really want? And uh, are the existing facilities able to match their wants, right, or their needs? And if not, I, I want to, you know, prioritize where some areas I would downplay it and some areas I would emphasize on them. And then, so that's one way of managing the uh, allocation of facilities and amenities. And then what else? Uh, these are existing facilities. What else can, can, can we add on to this list? And that would require feedback from Mary Mount. I spoke about the bicycle track. Mm -hmm. So what else? Does it involve widening Bishan Street 22? We have a bicycle track. And uh, yeah, I know there is Bishan Amokyo Park up north. So a lot of people just go to the park and exercise. So, so Marymount SMC is blessed by a huge park to the north of the SMC. But for example, can we have a jogging track around the whole Marymount SMC? You know? So you don't have to go to the park to jog. The moment you leave your flat, you can actually go onto the jogging track. You can jog one round, round Marymount SMC, for East Marymount, and also for West Marymount. So these, these are, okay, let's, let's call it fine tuning. 
where facilities are already there, can we fine tune it? Can we make it better? Can we improve on it? So right now it's too premature for me to go into details until I know the list of facilities, we prioritize them, where we need to enhance, we'll enhance them. Where we need to say, ah, let's forget about this, let's close this facility. We may have to do it if the utilization rate is very low. Back to you, Hubert. Okay, Doc, I think it's time for you to take a drink of water while you listen to my yes. next question, okay? Yes, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Here's the next question. How do you achieve a win in Marymount SMC? And the second part of the question is, how will you uplift the mental well-being of the residents if you're elected? How do I achieve a win, W-I-N? Yes, how will you achieve a win in Marymount? Let me say Friday, how do I ensure voters will mark a cross for PSP, for Ang Yong Guan? Yes. <laughs> Very good. That has been in my mind for the last four months, <laughs> how to achieve a win. And we divide our whole campaign into ground campaign and e-campaign. E-campaign means electronic campaign, campaigning using internet, right? So ground campaign, walking the ground is a must. You don't walk the ground, you don't know your resident, you are not fit to go into parliament. So walking the ground, walk, 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 ground, ground, ground. That is the first half of the equation. The second half of the equation is you must be visible to your young voters, old voters on the internet, on social media. That's why I, I started angyongwan.com. I bought the domain. <laughs> I bought the domain. <laughs> Luckily, I, 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 nobody wanted it, angyongwan.com. And, and someone told me, not easy to just buy your name and put a .com there. <laughs> Most of the time, they say, not available. <laughs> and that's it. I was so lucky. It was so, so it was available when I went in. So it's angyongwan.com. So for all the viewers out there, you want to get to know me, just type angyongwan.com. Google angyongwan.com. Six platforms will appear. YouTube. Wow. YouTube. Then you have uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and then you have Twitter, and then you have um, Instagram, and lastly, my blog. So six, six, six social platforms will appear. And then below the six social platforms, you have contact Dr. Ang, Mary Mount at, uh, at psp.org.sg. And you can even Telegram me, there is a telephone number associated to the telegram. And I have been receiving messages from the ground through the telegram and through the email. So, so you're already connected with me uh, as far as e-campaign goes. When you type angyongwan.com or when you scan, you scan my card, you scan my QR code, you get into the six platform. And from there, you choose whatever platform you want. You can, you can know more about me. You click YouTube, all the recent YouTube videos I made will appear. My speeches, the story of my life, all will be there. You click uh, Facebook, the latest Facebook postings about me. Uh, I've been doing Facebook Live for the last two days. All will be available. Basically, I want you to know who is Ang Yong Guan his professional side and his personal side. So ground campaign and electronic campaign is the way to win any election. I hope I'm proven right. My team has already decided whether we win or lose, we are contemplating or writing a book. That's nice. COVID-19 COVID election, how to go about planning and organizing it. And if we win, wow. It's going to be a one, and it's going to be another book. But it will be a, a maybe a thicker book. <laughs> and we lose, it will be a thinner book. And my planners, uh, Dr. Mr. Tan Ping An and Mr. Wong Soon Hong, they are, they are very good. One in charge of operation, one in charge of planning. They told me uh, that 
they, they, they are toying with the idea of setting up a school, a school of uh, political development, political education, where we educate free of charge, you know, Marymount's uh, citizen, what it involves to take part in the political process, whether as a candidate or as a voter, you know, what does it entail? So a lot of young Marymount students may say, ah, I want to be a candidate. I want to learn to be a candidate. I want to learn from this school of political education. And we are serious about it because in any responsible democracy, the political process is critical and you need to educate the people on the political process. Uh, Jacinta Arden, is it Jacinta Arden? Yes. The New Zealand Prime Minister. She yeah. started at 17 years old. She was assisting, I think, her aunt in the political process. And she went through baptism of fire. And look at her, she's so dynamic. She's so clear. She's so down to earth. She went to United Nations to give a speech and she brought her baby along. And she isn't married. <laughs> she, she wasn't married at that time. And she's still not married. She brought the boyfriend along, the partner along. You know, and she's so dynamic. She's so clear in, in what she's saying because they went. She went through baptism of fire, as young as seventeen years old. And I want Mary Mao, youngster, to say that I want to take part in the political process. I want to attend this school of political education. Right, and then there you are. We are empowering Mary Mao citizens. Make them feel good. That's and something. empower. <laughs> Very impressive. And how will you also uplift the mental well-being of residents if you're elected? I think you've answered that. <laughs> Maybe you can just reiterate just once again, uh, encapsulate it. Yeah, basically, mental health is part and parcel of uh, overall health. We have social well-being, physical well-being, mental well-being, and spiritual well-being, the four legs of a chair. So mental health is one of the four legs. It is no use being physically healthy, but mentally uh, exhausted, tired, or troubled. You know? So we really, really have to promote mental health as a, a, a part of health, uh, as part of health. That health is not just absence of physical symptoms. You know, I don't have cough, I don't have fever, I don't have headache, so I'm healthy. I think that that's just part of health. We must say, I don't have those symptoms, but I am relaxed. I don't have stress. Uh, so I'm not stressed. I don't have bad stress. <laughs> I have good stress. I don't have bad stress. And I can manage stress very well. So we, we, would, we will share with Marymount residents how to handle stress, how to promote mental wellness, well-being, the, the key issue is a sense of emotional security and high self-esteem. Not too high, eh? too high is no good. Esteem, high self-esteem. How do we promote emotional stability, security, and high self-esteem? And it's very good because if we talk about it, then as, as Marymount citizen, when you are a parent, how do you handle your children and promote their esteem, make them feel secure? How do you avoid traumatizing them? And what are the vulnerable areas you must look for? What are the areas that you, you must not go into? When you go into those areas, you're going to traumatize your child. So it's a very interesting point. It's not just developing the child. It's also helping parents with the parenting skills. So Marymount parents are equipped with proper parenting skills to bring up children with high esteem and a sense of emotional security. And these, these are things which I am capable of doing. You know, we can come up with training manual, we can come up with courses, we can help Marymount parents be great parents. Uh, and Marymount parents will have first priority. Other constituency, they hear of this course, they want to come and say, wait first. <laughs> wait first, let me clear my waiting list of Marymount parents first. So we're empowering the parents. And then children growing up, 
in Marymount will have not only happy childhood, but proper parenting as well. So these are small areas. These are areas we can look into in promoting mental health in Marymount. Then, of course, work-life balance. I know, Hubert, you don't like this term, work-life balance. <laughs> I don't believe there's such a thing as work-life balance. Because one goes up, the other goes down, right? <laughs> so, we, perhaps we talk about equilibrium, uh, how to optimize uh, working smart and playing hard, how to optimize that. Okay? We can go on and on. Then we, we, we will organize just one dialogue. No? You, you and I talk about strengths, talk about how to have you know, good mental health. But today the emphasis is how to make Marymount uh, a wonderful place to live in. Right? A model constituency. That's the emphasis today. Not so much mental health. Mental health is only one aspect of it. Over to you, Hubert. Thank you. Now, this question, well, let's just read it out. Dear Dr. Ah, I'm a resident at Block 292. We have been registering so many COVID cases. Today, we yet again register a spike of over 20 cases. In the name of public health, shouldn't the elections be postponed till everything has been stabilized? And with the rising numbers, which is obviously not under control, in this person's opinion, in the interest of our own health and my families, can I choose as my right not to even go for elections this Friday and not be penalized and no fault of mine? I believe ELD, the elections department, has mentioned that if you have objection, they, you will not be penalized. Am I right, Hubert? I'm not too sure myself. I'm not for, very... for this election, if you feel that you have some symptom and you don't want to go, or you feel that you're not comfortable, you suspect you may have COVID-19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to go, I think the ELD will, will, will more or less accept that, that, that reason for not going. They won't take it harshly against you. So that's, uh, we don't know how many percent will adopt that attitude, I don't want to go. There are still community cases. In a way, it's a protest, if you ask me, Hubert. Why do you say that? Don't, don't you agree? Because I, I don't think elections should be held when there are still community cases. Mm -hmm. So as an act of protest, I don't go for the election. I don't go and vote. Isn't that an act of protest? It's almost akin to casting blank votes, you know. But I don't want to physically go there to cast the vote. <laughs> I already cast the vote by staying at home. You, you heard about voting by walking, uh, by stemming. No, they call it walk, voting by, <coughs> by uh, you know, by insisting, by, 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 by standing, or they call it what, but voting by, uh, by standing. Uh, there's a term, you know, that means I, I protest, I don't want to go. So by okay. standing firm. Huh? Let's call it a protest vote, okay? Yeah, ah, protest vote. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think ELD in this COVID-19 climate has decided that for those who don't want to go, for various reasons, they will not be penalized. Mm. We will check on this, you know. I will ask my election agent to check on this. Is this true? Is this an ELD? I think COVID-19 election does have this provision. We don't go, it will not be. You see, if there's no COVID-19, if you don't go, you'll be taken off the voters register. Then you've got to reapply to reinstate your name in the register. That is for non-COVID general election. That's why election is compulsory in Singapore. So in a COVID-19 climate, I think election may not be taken as compulsory. This is how I feel. Because you can't force people who disagree with having election in the COVID-19 climate, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Now we our next So I can respect the wish of this citizen. He or she feels that this is ridiculous. There are still community cases and we are holding an election. Mm. It reflects badly on the ruling party. They are so obsessed with having a fresh mandate. Sec the health of Singaporeans is put second place. That's PSP stand all along. 
mustn't have an election when the COVID-19 is not completely stabilized. Not even completely, not stabilized. What is stabilization? Zero community cases over a period of weeks. And then you can say stabilized. Okay, Hubert. Thank you very much, Doctor, for that uh, very uh, clear answer to that question to give us peace of mind. Uh, here's your next question, and it reg with regards to mosquitoes and dengue fever is a public health threat to our community in Marymount. And this person says that currently much of Marymount SMC, Bishan North area, Jalan Pemimpin are dengue clusters. Is there or are there any measures that the town council can do to exterminate such pests like mosquitoes, cockroaches and rats? Yeah, it's, it's a big problem. Residents of Block 23, 24 complain to us about rats. Mosquito is also an issue because of dengue. So really, we've got to step up swing fogging. We've got to step up cleaning the premises. We've got to step up paying attention to areas of stagnant water, you know, areas of clogged up drain and all that. So all these got to be stepped up. So we really got to, as I say, maintenance. We got to maintain a wonderful, beautiful Marymount environment. How do we do it? Constant checking of drain, constant checking of stagnant pond, constant supervision so that we know that all these potential places where mosquitoes can, can be a nuisance uh, will be stamped out. It's, it's to avoid being complacent, to have this feeling that we must always be vigilant. Dengue has become a big problem recently. So we really got to be vigilant and do something about it. Thank you. Do you think that HDB BTO price of about 500K for a four room flat is still okay for young voters? Well, I, it's, it's relative. It's a question of relativity. I think generally speaking, cost of houses, cost of flats in Singapore, generally speaking, they are very high. And, and why is this so? Why can't we have a, a low, a cheaper price? Is it because of cost of land factored into the sale price of the flat? We got to really examine if so, can we do something about it? And then uh, for first-time buyer, is there a need to heavily subsidize them? Our party believes in helping young couples rent a flat first and then eventually have enough savings to buy a flat. So renting a, a BTO flat before they have the ability to buy so that they, they don't keep on delaying their marriage or delaying having a first child because of the high cost of a BTO flat. I think that's quite, that's very stressful. That affects the mental health of Singaporeans. So if I know I can rent a flat while at the same time applying to buy one, then I have a win-win situation. I rent one, I can start, I can marry without you know, buying a flat. I can just rent one. And then uh, with the aim of buying one eventually, right? Then I can, I can tackle my marriage. I can tackle having a first child without the burden of a 500,000 housing loan. So that's my party stand, you know, we want thinking of start with rental with a view to buy eventually. So the burden of the financial burden will be lighter then it's easier to start a family or even to start marrying and then a family. So I, I think my, my party is aware of this, but it is not a piecemeal attempt to solve the problem. We need a holistic approach to the whole thing of pricing of flats. And we, we really have to empathize with first-time buyer. We really must. It comes back to beliefs, values, and principles. We believe that Young couples should not delay their marriage because of inability to buy a flat. Should not delay having a first child because they can't afford a flat. I think that's ridiculous, right? 
if, if you want more children, total fertility rate to go up, then you need to have marriages first. You need them to get married first before you can have a child. And when, when you tell them, you know, they have to wait for their VTO, then where do they stay meanwhile? <laughs> right? And a VTO is so expensive, then the couple have to work so hard, earn so much just to pay for the mortgage. And they live in anxiety all the time. One day, they cannot have a job. Who is going to pay for the mortgage you know, of the flat? So constantly, they have to keep going, keep going. You know? Double income family, just to pay for a VTO flat. I think it's very stressful. It's very bad for mental health. And the quality of life will be affected. They won't dare to argue with their boss for fear of losing a job. <laughs> they don't, so they just suppress everything inside them. And then they have anxiety, they have OCD, they have depression. That's very bad. And even if they can cope, they pay a price somewhere. Headache, chest pain, insomnia. No, minor, minor symptom, not amounting to a mental illness. But that's enough to affect the quality of life. Hubert, back to you. It's very good. You forgot to mention things like your bosses as well. <laughs> bosses. Oh, I'm talking about bosses. Bosses. Your boss, divorce. B O S S. B I V O R C E. B O. It's okay. Anyway, Dr. Ang, our next question. Bosses. Is, yeah. For Marymount to go into opposition, it means cutting all ties with Bishan Topaya GRC and the economies of scale that come with managing it. Are you prepared to raise maintenance fees to keep things going? We, we try not to. The ideal is to achieve economy of scale by doing it with Yochukang and Kebun Baru, assuming all three seats are won by PSP. If we can't, we will work closely with our HQ, assuming that other GRCs are won by PSP, for example, West, West Coast, right? So we can leverage on the GRC for economy of scale. There's nothing preventing us from doing it. As, as I say, we have an advisory council who will advise us on running the town council. I, 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 I'm not worried about it, right? So that's why, that's why, that's why, I, that's why they took out Vishan North and call it Marymount. They are delinking it from Topayo, Vishan Topayo, GRC, right? So we will prove to them we can stand alone, we can be independent, we can be greater than them, better than them, right? No. Tiny, tiny but shiny. <laughs> tiny but shiny, I like that, yes. Okay. Tiny but shiny. Let's move on to our next questions. We've got a few more questions to go uh, before we come to a close. How will you handle neighborly disputes? The police seem to have no power over recalcitrant neighbors who cause trouble for others. Yeah, I saw one today when I did the walkabout. I came across this household outside was stacked with old newspaper, old plastic bags, old items, not discarded. It's hoarding. I think this, whoever stays in this house is hoarding. And the hoard, hoarding of material spill over to the common leaf area. And I think, I'm sure the three or four neighbors cannot accept that, right? You are eating into the common lift waiting area, lift landing area. So that's a good example of how do we, how do we settle the whole issue. In fact, when I walked past, it also spilled into the staircase and I saw a lady sitting at the end of the, at the stair, packing some of the items. So the hoarding behavior not affected, not only affected outside the house, but into the staircase as well. So that, that is a very clear example of how do we go about settling the dispute. I'm sure the neighbors are not happy. You're overstretching your boundary into a common area. 
So within town council, we may have to have a mediation committee. This mediation committee, again, staffed by one or two regular staff and the rest will be volunteers. Retired lawyers, retired doctors, you know, coming to this mediation center to help out. So neighbors can come to this mediation center and then sort out their dispute and, and in a friend, friendly manner without having to make a police report. That's, that's something that makes Marymount special, right? We, we can do it without resorting to a police report. Tough, but let's make it work. Let's try and make it work. Yes, I, Hubert? I like that positive attitude. Yes, like you, you're very positive. <laughs> I only met you two days ago, you know, and you agreed to come on air with me. It's, it's amazing. Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell the whole world. Anyway, <laughs> it is our final three questions. Yes? So yes. just for a little bit more, our next question, uh, which regards to education, which you mentioned earlier on, this person asked, we can also rope in teachers to help run a center for students with special needs in Marymount SMC. We can tailor programs to help the students with ASD, ADHD, etc. A tuition center catered at a pace to help these students cope better in mainstream schools. What do you think? 100%. Bravo. I want to know the questioner. I want to enlist this questioner into my list of volunteers. You know, perhaps you can start writing a paper, how to do it. We will discuss the paper and then we will translate the paper into action. You know, everything must start with a thought, an idea, a belief, right? And then we write a paper to explain in details how to go about translating the thought or the idea or the belief into, into a fruition into a project, into, a, you know, into something that we can work on. So I encourage Marymount people to think like that. If you have an idea, write me a few paragraphs, expand it into a paper, and then we can discuss. You'll be invited to, to have a discussion and then we can implement it. So you feel that it's not just top down, you, know? you, you have a participation from bottom up. I like the idea very much. I think the writer, in my opinion, is associated with the helping profession. ADHD, ASD, uh, this all a mouthful. All means people with special, children with special needs. Brilliant, uh, really brilliant. And eventually, we may have monthly uh, Marymount talk show where we all come together, it's Zoom together and talk, right? We don't have to go to a physical place for a conference. We can have Zoom conference. Okay. And then we talk, we can talk about how to beautify Mary Mom. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, thank you. Uh, our second last question with regards to cats. Currently, cat ownership in HGB is still illegal. How do you propose adopting a cat in this climate for cat lovers? Wow, I, I, I have two dogs. Huh? Uh, Emma and Dante. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm a pet lover myself. In fact, today during my walkabout, I, the, the dogs like me very much. I, I had the opportunity to carry a few dogs. <laughs> and, and because I carried the dogs, I, the, the smell remained on me. So when I went door to door, the dogs would, 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 would reach out to come to my, my hand <laughs> and start licking my hand and, and then they, they, they know, they know that I had carried dogs a while ago. So, so affinity is there. Dogs seem to be attracted to me. I'm not Caesar Millen, but <laughs> at least they, they know what this doctor likes dog, not bad. So I'm all for dogs. I'm all for cats. So if there's a need to review the policy, vote me into parliament. I'll help you review the policy. Why no cats? Why cats are not allowed. I think they changed the policy about dogs recently. Used to be small dogs for HDB flats, cannot be big dogs. Yes. But I think they changed a bit. Am I right, Hubert? Uh, they changed, yes, but I don't know the exact size uh, for uh, dogs. They, they allow bigger size dogs. Huh? I'm not sure so, about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so look, policies are not cast in stone. Huh? They're subject to change. You can change them, modify them, but it requires people to speak up. If you don't speak up, you don't get changed. You don't get any change. So you need member of parliament who dare to speak up. And I can tell you, I have courage, okay? <laughs> Character must come with courage. Courage to speak up. I've been a fighter since medical school days. Okay, I won't go into detail. If you want to find out more, watch my video up and close and personal with Dr. Ang. The other half of Dr. Ang, the other side of Dr. Ang. I was a fighter in my medic medical school days. I just dropped a hint. I took on the government for 88 days until, until we forced them to drop one law against medical students. It's all in the newspaper. It's all in my blog. Everybody can see. I was on the front page of the Straits Times as a student leader, you know, 24 years old, fighting the government, <laughs> forcing them to remove a stupid law. You go and find out what is this stupid law. <laughs> so okay. courage is very important. The ability, the courage to speak up, not another yes man, uh, not another uh, person who just obey orders. <laughs> in a rigid setup, you know what I'm talking about, and dare not speak up. We are certainly finding more, a lot more about you here this evening, uh, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you, Hubert. I enjoy this dialogue, you know. Yes, but you know, it's okay. From cat to courage and uh, student uh, activities, whatever. Anyways, that was interesting and we found finding out more. Of course, if you want to find out more, just a quick drop that this, uh, you can reach Dr. Ang at Ang Yong Guan, Dot com, right? Yep. It is youngguan.com if you want to find out more of the man that you can vote into uh, Marymount SMC as your candidate to stand in parliament. Now, for the final question, Dr. Ang, first and foremost, on a personal note, as a Marymount resident and Singapore citizen, I sincerely hope that you create history by winning this newly carved out SMC and by becoming a legend. Now, how would you continue, regardless of the results, to engage and create awareness and understanding of national policies amongst Singaporeans, specifically so for the younger generation to help shape our nation's future and its decisions on a national level? Very good question. I talk about the School of Political Education. Mr. Tan Peng An, Mr. Wong Sun Hong, they are very interested in, in this project. I am also interested and together we can do something about it. School of Political Education. If I lose, I will continue to work on this School of Political Education and I will continue to have this kind of platform once a month Zoom with residents of Marymount. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean when I lose, I'll run away. I will still be around. But I... At the end of it all, I want young people to come forward. This is where the School of Political edu Education comes in. Young people, you know, we can be mentor, we can uh, be an advisor, but in the end, the more young people come forward, the better. And on this note, I want to proudly say the quality of alternative party candidates has gone up many times. I said it many times in 2011, when I took part in the election, there was only one full kernel, that's me, and one principal private secretary of the Prime Minister, Go Chok Tong, and that's Mr. Tan Ji Sin. And then in 2015, you have another kernel, Tan Ping An, came on board, and many more came on board. And in this general election, you had so many military men, lieutenant colonels, colonels, and you have a SIA pilot, Darren Soon, 30 years old. You have a university law undergrad, Sean Chu, 22 years old. Don't you think it's amazing? Talented people coming forward. So the, the quality of opposition candidates has gone up tremendously. And I take pride in it. Huh? It, because 2011 was a watershed general election. And that was nine years ago. Nine years later, things have changed. The political landscape has changed. 
and that's wonderful and that's good for Singapore. If it, if not for lack of young candidates, I wouldn't have come in because I come in, there's still not enough young candidates. By the next general election, more should come forward. And that's my concluding point. Thank you, Dr. Ang. Yep. You know, and I think um, with the setting up of a school of political study, is that what you're calling it? Yes, yes. The political college, then uh, pol politics college, right? Not political. But yeah. If that happens, well, then I'm sure we'll see more residents. But, you know, interestingly, I just learned not too long ago myself that um, the PSP party was started one year ago with yep. just 12 members. Yes. Currently, in just one year, it's grown to how many members again? Please refresh my memory. At, at least 1,500, at least 1,500 members. And recently, it keeps on growing. <laughs> keeps on growing. So it's, well, it's marvelous. So I think that, that illustrates what you just mentioned, the changing political landscape in Singapore and how uh, Singaporeans are less apathetic than they were before. Yeah. So please don't give a blank check to the ruling party. A blank check means they win all 93 seats and they can write any amount on the blank check. We must not let them win all seats. We must only we must win 32 seats so the check will not be blank. The check will be 32 seats to opposition. Please <laughs> return 32 seats to the opposition. Sign. Na, 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 na. Voter of Mary Mao. Dr. Ang. This morning, I hear that you had a guest during the walkabout. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about the walkabout that happened this morning? Very good. Well, Mr. Lee Sheng Yang, we, we discussed last week, and, and he said, look, Yong Guan, if you have time, I don't mind coming to Marymount. I knew him as my brigade commander. I was a division medical officer. He was a brigade commander, second brigade commander. We went to ROC, Republic of China, Taiwan, this call for military training. I had to present a medical support plan to him. He was a brigade commander. And then we became friends. Very unassuming man, very intelligent, unassuming, very compassionate man. And that's how I knew him. So when he decided, look, doc, can I come to Marymount? I said, sure, why not? So this morning, I went to pick him up and then uh, along the way, I had a, a young man called Niger. Niger was doing all the Facebook live. We managed to at least attract, at least attract, we managed to attract 600 viewers uh, within a period of one hour. So by the time we reached Bishan North Shopping Mall, there were already 600 on board and watching us. And I enjoyed the whole process. I'm so happy with Facebook live. Because he allows me to talk spontaneously without any script. And it comes from the heart. What you say comes from the heart. And it's so wonderful. And Xing Yang could share about his beliefs and convictions. What you see in this whole GE 2020 you know, as somebody who wants to help. So it was a very, I really enjoyed the whole morning. Uh, it was really wonderful. So the whole GE experience is very enriching for me, very challenging, very enriching. And because of the detailed planning by Peng An and Sun Hong, it, it was, every day was smooth going, you know. We, we, we mobilized people according to what we had a, a planned earlier. And it was it's such a joy. And then with, with Shen Yang, and everybody was trying to take photo with him. You know, and Shen Yang got to say, come, let's include dog. <laughs> Let's include your candidate. <laughs> well, and then you say, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Why not? Why not? So that's it. And I don't mind. You know? If the emphasis is on him, so be it. But he, he adds so much. He added so much, uh, I would say, color you know, to the whole campaign this morning. And so much meaning, so much color, so much meaning. And people can see that, uh, basically, people can see that here is a man who believed that his older brother has lost his way. Here is a man who believed that his father's values have not been enforced over the years. 
a man who believes that he must bring back the values of the older generation of leaders, the first G and the two G leaders, people who serve Singapore selflessly. I remember telling the press this morning, Lee Kuan Yew's, his father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's pay was $3,500 a month in those days. It was not market rate at all. And then when they started paying ministers market rate, then I realized something is wrong. You better make up your mind. You want to be a public servant, serve the public at public rate. No, you want to be a public servant and then you pay yourself private rate. I'm confused. <laughs> and that's what motivated me to get involved in 2011. You can't have your cake and eat it. <laughs> you decide you want to be a public servant, you serve in the public sector. I was in the armed forces for 23 years, collecting public pay. Nobody can say it. I was collecting private pay. I was interested only in money, right? I was serving the nation for 30, 23 years. So when they started paying themselves market rate, I said something is wrong. This, is, this government has gone commercial and has made politics a commercialized activity. And that's wrong. We must not make politics a commercialized activity. We must bring it into the mainstream again, that politics is about sacrificing, about fighting for the nation, about serving the people, not about serving your own pocket. <laughs> so Cheng Yang is there to, to bring back those values again. So it was very motivating for me. And I really enjoyed the whole morning. Thanks to his presence. I haven't thanked him yet, got no time. I'm going to WhatsApp him after this. <laughs> Thank you, Sheng Yang, for your presence. It really meant a lot to me. And to the voters of Marymount. Yeah. Your last words right now, okay? Your last words in one minute or less to win the hearts and minds of Marymount residents like myself, please. Okay. Please don't vote another general into parliament. There are enough of generals there. Please vote somebody who can add value to parliamentary discussion. Somebody who can factor you into the discussion. Somebody who listens to you. Somebody who is willing to understand you and get you on board and together build a beautiful Marymount SMC. So that when you walk out of your home, your home is your first home. When you walk out of the home, wow, you are entering a second home. That would be my message. Out of your home into a second home. And Marymount is your second home, right? Your first home is your apartment. That's what I want to see. And then your values, your beliefs, your principles, are enhanced and in alignment with how your MP feels about the place. He doesn't just develop the infrastructure. Infrastructure development to me is not a big thing. Very easy, just come up with a plan, put in money, the people will build buildings for you, build playgrounds for you. But it's a software, it's the non-tangible, it's the grace, it's the compassion, it's the empathy, it's a sense of belonging and it's the cooperation that with your neighbours, the Gotong Royong spirit, the Kampong spirit that we must bring back. Otherwise, it's a very cold society, cold community. We cannot afford to have that. We must make Marymount very warm, very friendly, and very secure place. That is my aim, my Marymount dream. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ang, for sharing your Marymount dream with us. So between the general, unless you forget the colonel, ex-colonel, right? Yep. So between the general and the colonel, please choose the colonel. Just like how you pick your favorite country fried chicken. <laughs> I'm Marymount resident Hubert Tang, and we'll see you <laughs> polls. Thank you, and good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye.